everybody get comfortable. And again, when somebody just asked, remember I'm just wearing my mask just because I'm around a lot of people and if by any chance I could carry it, I do not want to bring it to you. So I'm, I'm gonna continue to wear my mask during classes for a while until this craziness lets up a little bit, which, you know, maybe it will in a couple of three or four weeks. Or, so get comfortable in how you're sitting. Take your time, uh, let your if you're in your chair, feel your feet on the floor. If you're on the ground, sit however you're comfortable, long-legged or cross-legged. And then just close your eyes. Let yourself feel the top of the head just gently floating upward. So there's more space in your spine. And then feel your breath coming in and going out through your nose. your breath come into your belly as you inhale And then let's let our arms come on out beside us. So if you're on the floor, you can lightly touch the floor with your fingertips there. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down through the midline to be in front of our chest. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And now, remember, I'm not going to mirror. Let your right arm come up right out from your shoulder, and then just drape the arm across your chest, see if you can let the hand come kind of to the middle of your shoulder, you know, to the muscle there where you're feeling like, ah, oh, I can release a little bit, let my arm hang, and then tilt your head to the right, so you're tilting away from your hand there, but just feel that weight, gently allowing yourself to release through the side of your neck. And then bring your head on back up and we're going to let that arm come down and bring the left arm out and then across the chest and again kind of hook your hand over right there where you're often really tight you know you can even massage a little bit with your own fingers and press a little bit there to let yourself find a bit of release and then when you're ready to tilt your head to the left feel that weight of your hand there let yourself feel a release down the right side of the neck. And then we're going to slowly bring our head back up, release our arms on out beside us now. And let's inhale the arms straight out from our shoulders. And then bring your hands forward of your shoulders and, and flex through both your hands here. Let yourself feel the undersides of the arms a little bit. And then let your fingers face down, fingertips face down, so you come there into the wrist that way. And then come to where you, your palms are facing down. And we're going to add a little twist here by drawing our left elbow back. It's almost like you're drawing a bow and arrow. And let yourself twist and look towards the left side there. The elbow goes back behind you and elbows bent, and then come on back forward with the hands forward, and we're going to go to the other side. So letting yourself ease your way into that bit of a twist, and then come on back into center. Let's do it again. So letting yourself inhale as you bring the elbow back, and exhale as you bring the hand back forward, and then inhale as you bring the right elbow back, and exhale as you bring it forward. And then open your arms on out wide, and let's bring our hands behind us. So if you're in your chair, it's real easy. You can just drape over the back of the chair, right? 
If you're on the floor, fingertips can come onto the floor. You can go flat onto your hands if you want. Just let yourself be easy in your neck. Really mindful. So if looking forward is better, look forward. If it feels good to look up a little bit, you can. If your neck's going, no way, don't do it. And then we'll come on back up. Let's come into a little bit of a forward bend. If you're in your chair, you can separate your feet. If you're on the floor, if you'd rather stretch your legs out and, instead of be cross-legged, then by all means do. And come forward from your low back. Let yourself release to where you want to be. So in the chair, if you want to go lower, you can go down to bring your hands to your feet or your ankles or a block on the floor in between your feet if you want. Just be mindful allowing yourself to release your neck by allowing the head to hang unless it bothers your back, right? And one more breath here. And then we're going to slowly come on back up. And if you're cross-legged on, on the floor, switch the cross of your legs, right? If you need to stretch your legs out in between sides, do and then get yourself back situated to where the other leg is in front. And we'll release our arms again out beside us. And let's inhale both arms out and up overhead. And then let your right hand encircle your left wrist and pull up a little bit, not harshly, right? But you're just gently pulling up just a little bit on that wrist. And then let yourself come over to the right side. And, and just a gentle releasing through the side of the body here. Don't do anything that hurts your shoulder. Let yourself, you know, breathe into that side you're stretching. And then we'll come back up to the top. We're going to switch hands and pull up a little bit on that right wrist. And then again, if you come to the side, it might not be far, right? Breathing into the side of the right side of the body here. And then come on back up to the top. Release your arms on back down beside you. Let's make one big arm circle, reaching the arms forward and up overhead and back behind you as far as you can go to bring the hands down. And then we'll reverse. We're going to reach back first. And then bring the arms up. And the palms turn to face each other. And then as you lower the arms on down in front of you, just be mindful, shake your arms out once you get all the way down and move through your fingers, stretch your legs out for a minute, move through your feet. We're gonna head around towards moving into cat-cow. So if you wanna be on your hands and knees, go for it. If you need a blanket under your knees or your hands, do that. Or if you wanna be up higher, come up into the seat of the chair with your hands. And if your wrist bothers you, really pay attention. This make a huge difference because you don't have a wrist crease anymore holding the edge of the seat of the chair or if everything feels like a little too much go down to your forearms you can still move through your spine being on your forearms right so take your time let yourself just start to ease your way through your cat cow traditionally we exhale when we come into that cat pose letting the tailbone drop down and inhale when we move the tailbone back and up, moving back through into cow. But there's really not a right or wrong, so just keep moving and keep breathing, right? Imagine that it is your breath that's moving you through your spine very easily, warming up the back and all the muscles alongside of your spine and your belly a little bit here. So finish the one you're on, and then come back to a more neutral spine here. Let's bring our left foot forward and our right foot back and come into a lunge. Now how long of a lunge you take, totally up to you. And how high you want your hands, that's another thing, it's up to you. But feel that right heel reaching directly behind your foot. Make sure that left knee is bending no farther forward than your ankle. And just enjoy feeling that openness in the back of the right leg. But also think about extending it all the way up through your spine so that you find a nice long back. Engage your belly a little bit. And we're going to switch legs. So 
come into the other side. And again, let's be really mindful. The length of your stance doesn't matter. It's that bend of that front knee that's important. And then again, just let yourself feel. But let the toes do the work for you, right? The back of the leg is opening up. You can feel it in your calf, behind your knee, behind your thigh. Good. Let's switch legs again. Any of you want to lift your left hand or forearm up to your thigh, you can. If you like to come a little bit more into the legs and out of your hands a little bit, feel free to do that. And then we'll switch again. So again, being mindful of your lunge here, the alignment, and if you want to bring your right hand or forearm up, you can. Think length through the whole body. Good. We're going to come on back down with hands and step forward and come on into standing forward bend. Feet hips distance apart and parallel. And you know, you use whatever support helps you feel okay in your back. Elbows above your knees, hands or forearms on your chair. Letting yourself move your head a little bit, nod or shake your head a little bit to try to find release there. Letting go through your jaw. And then just really easily come into your breath. Remember your knees can be bent, your knees can be straighter. You just don't want to lock your knees. Feel those full deep breaths, expanding the ribs in all directions on your inhales. Allow your inhales and exhales to even out and length a bit. Good. One more nice, full, deep breath. And then we'll bring our hands up to our hips. We're going to bend our knees and rise on up to standing. And inhale our arms all the way out and up. And let our exhale bring our hands right down together in front of our fronts. So take your time to adjust into mountain pose. If you need to move around a little bit, shift around, look at your feet, whatever works. And then once you start to bring your gaze forward, for a second just clasp your hands behind you. And let yourself have the elbows pretty soft. And you can feel what your pelvis is doing with your hands like this. So if you were to be tucking up under yourself with your tailbone a little bit, you can really tell what it does to your back. So feel the tailbone reaching down towards between your heels. A little engagement of the belly, feeling nice and open across your chest. And feel your hips just wanting to stack up over your ankles and your shoulders over your hips. And think about your chin being about parallel to the floor. And then release your hands gently and just softly bend your elbows as you bring your hands together in front of your chest. Feel connected there through each finger and your thumbs, your palms a little bit, whatever touches your palms. And just enjoy coming into your mountain pose. And as you unfold your arms on down beside you, feel both feet in the floor as you inhale both arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, bend your knees as you come on forward into that standing forward bend. Let your next inhale lengthen out your spine. Nice long back here. And let's step our right foot back and come into a lunge. Draw your shoulders down, away from your ears. Let yourself find the length of your lunge. Inhale and exhale into your downward facing dog pose. So whether your hands are on the chair or on the blocks or on the floor, be mindful. Remember, blocks can be tippy. Let yourself reach back through your sitting bones and your tailbone. You can bend your knees in dog, right? If, if it feels better to keep your knees bent, keep your knees bent. If you feel like you 
want to let yourself reach into longer legs, that's fine, but just be mindful, feel the sit bones reaching back, and let your next inhale carry you towards a plank. And you know, you don't have to go all the way into a full plank. You can go into a knees down plank or forearms down forearm plank. Take your time, find that strength here in the core of the body. If you like to bend your elbows a little bit, sometimes just a tiny little bit of the elbows coming in towards the ribs really gets you into your biceps, your shoulders, your arms. And then we'll come on back into down dog again. Remember, feel free to adjust as you come from your plank to your dog and back again. And we'll bring the right foot forward to come into lunge. So if you need to put your left knee down to come into that lunge, by all means do. And then we'll step all the way back into standing forward bent. So feet hips distance apart and parallel. And you know, if you need to put your elbows above your knees to support your low back, just be really mindful of how your back feels. If your head can hang, go right ahead and do it. Let yourself release the head so you feel that weight of your head, that heavy head, creating more space in your spine. And follow your breaths all the way in and all the way out. As we let our hands come back up to our hips, we're going to bend our knees and rise on up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Let's reverse the arms. Inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms like wings as you bend your knees to come forward into standing forward bend. And on your next inhale, find a flat back wherever you want your hands to help you on your shins, on your chair, on your blocks. And this time we'll step the left foot back to come into lunge. So let your shoulders draw down away from your ears. Enjoy finding your whole body again in your lunge. And we're gonna come on into a downward facing dog pose. So again, it is totally up to you and your shoulders where you have your hands on the floor or the blocks or the chair. If you want to walk your dog, go ahead and bend a knee at a time. Be mindful. Let yourself release now through your face and your jaw. So if turning your head from side to side kind of helps you release a little bit through your jaw and your neck, right? Come on back to your full dog. And on your next inhale, come on out again towards that plank. And then again, it is your kind of plank you want to do. Go to forearms, you can let yourself bend your elbows, you can do full push-ups if you're of a mind to do that, right? Or you can stay in plank, find that core strength, whether you're on the elbows, uh, forearms, or knees down. And then we'll come back again into our downward facing dog pose. Elbows are softly hugging towards each other in your dog. so. You don't want your shoulders way jacked up by your ears, but you also don't want to be trying to force them way down. There's this place in the middle that feels just right. And let's bring our left foot forward to come into lunge. And you know whatever you need to do to get into that lunge, knee or knees down to get there. And we will step forward from here, coming on back into standing forward bend. So be mindful. Be easy, weight of your head again, if you can let yourself just enjoy allowing the head to release and hang. And then breathing. Let the most important thing be right now, just to watch your breath. Once you're in the pose comfortably, just receive your inhales and your exhales. Imagining they're equally important. full breath and then we'll bring our hands back up to our hips and bend our knees and rise straight on up let's inhale our arms all the way out and up and on our exhale let our hands come down together in front of our hearts 
Let's inhale our hands right up through the midline. Once they get up above your head, clasp your hands and bring your, your hands behind your head so that you are just gently feeling the back of your head press into your hands. Make sure when you do that, you feel how your belly engages. Make sure you don't tuck your tailbone up under you at all. Feel the tailbone reaching down. And now hug your elbows in towards your face a little bit. See if you can lift the elbows up a tiny bit, but you're still pressing your head gently into your hands. So you're really supporting your head with your hands. You can go up as high as you want, but just make sure you keep the belly engaged, the tailbone reaching down. One more breath, and then bring the elbows back forward so you're looking forward. Let's open the arms on out beside us. Let your palms face up and your elbows melt down. Arms are straight out from your shoulders. And then let's inhale the arms all the way out up overhead. And on the exhale, bend our knees and come into our standing forward bend. And on your next inhale, find that nice long back again, wherever you need your hands to give you support. And we're going to walk into a down dog from here. So your hands can be whatever surface you like to use. Step your way back into your dog. Take your time if you want to walk in your dog or move around, wag your tail a little bit. You know, just let it be easy and kind of a natural dog instead of you just coming in the dog and feeling like you're forcing yourself into it, right? And on the next inhale, we'll come out towards a plank. And it's optional here whether you want to add a back bend. You can, you don't need to. Stay in plank. You can go down to the floor and come onto your forearms into a sphinx. You can go into a little cobra or you can come to an up dog. And then we'll come on back to down dog. Remember, back bend's optional here. Take your time. Find your dog for a breath. And on your next inhale, come on back again towards that plank. An optional back bend here. So you can come into a sphinx, a cobra, an up dog, or no back bend at all. And then we'll make our way back again into down dog. Good. Let's bring our left foot forward to find lunge here. And then let's come on back into standing forward bend. And I know some of you are just fine to let yourself release more forward. If you like to hold your elbows because that feels really good, you can. Obviously, if it bothers your back, don't do it. Let yourself Feel the weight of your head if possible, or allow yourself to keep your head more in line with your spine if that bothers your back to hang your head there. And then, again, breath. Most important thing, just feel and follow your breath all the way in and out. Let go through your face. Let your mouth soften all around your mouth, all around your eyes, too. And then imagine your forehead is just smoothing out. One more full deep breath here. And then we'll bring our hands to our hips. We'll bend our knees and come on up to standing. And we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down together in front of our hearts. So find your mountain pose. If you need to move around a little bit to do that, do. If you need to look at your feet, if you need to sway a little bit, you know, sometimes just coming forward and back a little bit or going side to side a little bit helps. Good. And then we'll go ahead and unfold our arms right on down beside us. So Check out, move around, do whatever you need, move through your feet if you want to. I'm going to turn my chair the other way, so if you're using a chair, you might want to. Have your blocks handy, too, by the front of your mat here. And we're going to step our right foot back for warrior one. So if you have your chair, you can put your fingertips on it. We'll step our right foot back. Remember, if you want to widen in your warrior one a little bit with your feet a little more towards the outside edges of your mat, do it for balance sake, right? or for more a lot of feeling of good in your hips too. So take your time. We're drawing our shoulders around square. And if you're in a pretty short stance, this hip pointer will come around pretty well too. 
let your arms just come on down for a second beside you. Feel the weight of your arms. And then bring your arms forward. Let the palms face each other for a second. Try not to round like this, but think of your chest almost coming forward as you plug your arm bones back into the shoulder socket. And then bend your elbows and bring your hands like we did before. Clasp at the back of your head and hug your elbows in a little bit. Feel the head pressing into your hands. And if you're comfortable to let the elbows go up a little bit higher, do. Feel like you're supporting your head with your hands, though. And as you feel the head gently pressing into the hands, it fires up the core of the body, your belly, your low back, your hips. Your head supported, so it feels kind of releasing for your neck. One more breath here. And then bring your gaze on back forward. Unfold your arms back like they were in front of you again, so the palms face each other. And then lower the arms down, and we're going to straighten our left knee out and try to really get this hip pointer around square now. You might need to adjust your feet. And I'm going to reach my hands back a little bit behind me and start to just come a little bit forward into pyramid. So you don't have to go far. You can go one inch, feel your thighs lifting up towards your hips. If you want to go farther, go for it. I mean, if you feel, oh, I just want to keep going and reach back with my hands, it feels great. More power to you. If it's better to stay up higher, do. So go where you can. Keep the back nice and flat and long. One more breath. And then bring your hands down to whatever surface you want to use. So you may want to use the chair back and be up higher. You might want to use the seat. Or you might want to come down to the blocks. And adjust your stance if you need to. Sometimes when you get your hands down, it feels better to change longer or shorter in your stance. Back heel is on the floor. Thighs are lifting up towards the hips. So take your time. Enjoy letting the backs of the legs open up. You'll feel your calves. You'll feel it. It's funny, this pose, some people feel it more in the front leg than the back, and some people feel it more in the back leg than the front leg. Now, if you like to fold over that leg, you can go ahead and bow forward over the leg if you choose to. Good, and then come on back up where you're more parallel to the floor for a second. And we're going to bend the front knee and find a lunge now by reaching that right heel directly behind our foot. So coming back to our regular lunge. And from here, we'll add a twist. Left hand to the left hip, rolling that left shoulder up. And you're more than welcome to reach the arm up if you want to. Or keep the hand down, lengthening through the top of your head, trying to stay fairly level there in your hips. One more breath. And then we'll bring the left hand on back down. And we're going to step forward and get our feet right underneath us. Go ahead and bend both your knees. Let yourself feel that release in your forward bend. And then bring your hands up to your hips. Press into your feet equally and come on up. We'll inhale the arms out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down together in front of our foot. So coming into your mountain pose, if you need to kind of adjust a little bit again, that swaying motion sometimes feels really good. It helps you kind of feel when you're very balanced front to back and side to side. And then just enjoy. Feel very centered here in your mountain pose. Finding that quiet strength. And feel the air all around you. And then we'll release our arms on down beside us again. Shake out a little bit. And we're going to go the other side. I'm going to stay with this one this way. We're going to step left foot back. And again, you can widen your feet a little bit if you feel better to do that. You can let your heels be more in a line if that feels better in your hips. Everybody's different. So how far back you step to, that's totally up to you. Once you get your shoulders square and that back foot is on the ground, just be mindful here as you start to draw your arms forward. And again, try not to more round forward, but kind of plug your arm bones back into the shoulder sockets. 
and then bend your elbows. And again, let your hands come behind your head, clasp them and draw your elbows forward. And then press your head into your hands gently, whether you like to let the head come up a little bit, the elbows rise up or not, it's up to you. Feel that lift through the front of the left hip. Your tailbone's still reaching back, kind of on a diagonal line, actually. You're not tucking your tailbone up under you here. So one more breath there. Bring your gaze back forward. Unfold your arms back forward again. Palms face each other. And then we'll lower our arms down and we're gonna straighten this front leg out. Now you can always adjust. If you're like, you look down and you're like, I, I gotta get this hip pointer around. I need to change my stance, do it. So palms are facing inward now towards the middle of the body and we're gonna reach our arms back. It's almost a little bit like you lean with your chest. So you're, you don't have to go far. Your legs are gonna work like crazy if you go one or two inches, right? Thighs are lifting up towards the hips. You wanna go lower, you go lower, but try to think of that flat back, right? Nice flat back, really engaging the legs, engaging all the muscles around the knees. When you're ready, bringing your hands down to whatever surface you like. You can be on the seat of the chair or the back of the chair. If you want, you can be down on the blocks. And once your hands are down, again, if you want to adjust the length of your stance or the width of your stance, do it. Thighs are lifting up still. Think of your arches of your feet lifting up away from the floor, even if they don't really do it, right? Just imagine it. And the four corners of your feet into the ground. So that base of your big toe mound, base of your little toe mound, and your inner and outer heel are in the floor. And again, if you like to bow over the front leg, you can go ahead and fold over if that feels good to you. Good, and then come on back a little more parallel to the floor if you were folded forward. Bend the front knee. We're going to reach into that lunge with that back heel now reaching directly behind our foot. And we'll add the twist, right hand to the right hip rolling that shoulder up. You know, if you put your palm down onto your sacrum, you can pretty much tell if you're dropping into that long side. It's a very different feeling. So if you can, try to keep your hips fairly level, find the twist in the middle of the back. And if you like to reach your arm up, you can. Just be mindful, reach out through the top of the head, back through your inner heel. And then we'll come on back down into our lunge with our hands. We're going to step forward, get our feet right underneath us. Walk a little bit in your standing forward bend. So you might want to have your hands up on blocks and bend one knee at a time. Lift the heel as you bend the knee so that you really, and in fact, see if you can like it be up on both heels and then bend one knee and let the other heel come down and then come up again with both heels up. So you're going pretty slowly. And you're letting yourself move through your feet. Good. And then finish off. Bring your right foot a little more to the midline and see if you can cross your left ankle in front of your right foot. And now your toes are all facing forward. They're parallel as best they can. And this really puts it into the back leg. So with the right leg behind you like this, you're feeling it up through the outside of your right leg. Just be mindful. Let the knees soften if you need. Let them bend if you need to. And then we're going to uncross and we're going to switch and go to the other side. So kind of getting that left foot a little more in the midline makes it easier to cross the right ankle over. And then again, you can bend your knees. You can let yourself, you know, be up higher with your hands, however high you need. Good, and then we'll uncross and get our feet right underneath us. Hips, this is a part of parallel. Rise your toes up for a second. So you're really letting your toes float up off the floor, bringing your hands to your hips. We're gonna rise on up to stand and keep your toes up if you can. And then release your arms out beside you. Inhale the arms out and up. And as the hands come down, let your toes come down too. Your toes find the floor. Your hands find your heart there and you can just let yourself enjoy.
coming into your mountain pose. Let it feel so effortless, like, like you could just stay here forever. That it, you're not tensing up anymore. Once you get aligned, the body's aligned, it's just easy. Easy to be there and stay there. And then we'll go ahead and let our arms come on down beside you. Shake out a little bit. Move through your feet and your ankles. And let's come on into Warrior Two this time. So I, again, am going to put my left hand on the chair, step my right foot back, and come into Warrior Two now, lining up my heels, bending into that left knee, making sure that knee's coming out over the center of my foot. And then I'm just going to float my arms up and, and flex my hands for just a second to feel the undersides of the arms. And then I'm going to go ahead and let the palms face down, reach out through the fingertips here softening the tops of the shoulders. Remember how at the beginning of class we put our hand across and onto the shoulder? Try to think about relaxing right there, right? You're just, if you could feel like hands were right there on the tops of your shoulders and you could release them down. We'll turn the left palm up and inhale, we'll reach up towards the sky. And on the exhale, we'll come on into side angle. So your left hand or forearm can come onto your thigh or your chair Rising the right arm up into line with the right side of the body, only if your shoulder lets you do that. Keep your hand down if you want. Beautiful. We're going to come on back into Warrior Two. Really press those feet away from each other. Let yourself feel good there. Nice. And we're going to bring ourselves around into a wide-legged forward bend. So if you need to use your chair for a little bit of support, do. And if you like your blocks, Grab your blocks as you come on forward and take your time. Let both your knees bend and let your elbows rest above your knees if you can. And just stay there for a breath. So in that squat where you're reaching back through your tailbone. Good. So one more breath here. going to put our hands on our thighs and rise right on up to standing. And bring your feet on together. Shake it out a little bit. Move around as you like. We're going to go to the other side. So we're going to step our left foot back this time for that warrior two. Line up your heels and line up that front knee. Make sure that knee's not going out beyond your toes. Way too much pressure into the knee over time. And then when you're ready to float your arms on up and out, flex your hands again if you can. Feel that back arm right behind your shoulder. And then go ahead and let the palms face down. Reach out through the fingertips. Soften the tops of the shoulders <coughs> down. It's like somebody has their hands on the top of your shoulders and you can just feel that weight and enable you to release the shoulders down. Let's turn the right palm up and inhale. Reach up towards the Nice full breath into the right ribs. And on your next exhale, come on into your side angle. You know, you can use your chair for your hand. You can use your thigh for your hand. You can go to your forearm on either one of those as well. Adding this left arm up. You know, if you add it up and it's like, wow, that doesn't feel good, don't do it. Keep your hand down. Sometimes just bringing the arm straight up from the shoulder feels better too. So if you'd like to use the arm to the extent that you can and it won't come into line with the left side of the body, let it go straight up. Feel your left sitting bone reaching for your left heel. One more breath. And we're going to come on back into warrior two. Pressing those feet away from each other as we come. We're going to let our hands come down again. We're going to turn our feet again more parallel. And again, make your way forward. Grab your blocks if you'd like. If you'd like to bend a knee at a time here, go right ahead, shifting a little bit. And you can just play a little bit how it feels good to you to adjust your way into the pose. And that can be any way you want. You know, you may want to keep both knees bent and stay there. You may want to straighten one leg at a time and let yourself ease your way a little deeper into your inner thighs. And remember, it is fine to stack those blocks up to use underneath your, your forearms or underneath your hands or under your head. 
right? I mean, you can let yourself come into this pose being supported so that you can release in your upper body and just watch your breath. And if you can, do a two or three breaths where you count when you inhale and think of reaching that same count when you exhale. So you're trying to let your inhales and exhales even out a bit. One more nice, full, deep breath. And remember, when you're ready to rise up, be very mindful. You know, you can bring your feet closer together before you come up. Take your time. And then bring your feet together. Walk around a little bit. And you can leave your mat where it is, but let's all go to a wall. Kind of space yourselves out as best you can so that you just bring your left hand to the wall. And we'll do just a little balance pose there. You can use a bookcase too, if you're close to a bookcase. And we're gonna come into a little tree pose, standing on our left foot and bringing our right foot in. So you can put your heel on your inner ankle and be right there with your toes on the floor and be perfectly happy right there, right? Or you can bring your foot up to the inner calf <coughs> where your heel is either below your knee, or if you want your foot up higher, make sure the foot is up as high as you can get it into the inner thigh there. And then just take your time. Let yourself play a little bit with your balance. And you know what else you can play with is where you're looking. Sometimes changing your focus just a little bit can help with balance and tree pose. So, I mean, I used to look down six to eight feet in front of me and that was my easiest place to balance, and over time it changes, right? So you can just play with letting yourself find a spot. If you like your arms to be overhead, go right ahead and bring your arms up. Because that certainly brings a lift to the front of the body. Uh, uh, it's almost a lift that you can't help but do when you bring your arms overhead. Good, we're gonna come on down. Shake out a little bit, take care of that left leg you're standing on, and then we'll turn around and go to the other side. So you're standing on your right leg. You can put the heel on the inner ankle so that you're, you know, really have a broader base of support. That doesn't mean you're not using, you know, you don't have to have the foot off the floor to really be using your core body here. You can do it with the toes on the floor. You can bring the foot up if you choose to. Again, you let yourself come to the height that you like with your foot. Again, if you like to experiment with where you're focusing, you know, that can be helpful. If you like to experiment with your arms, that can be helpful too. Overhead, or I mean, you can play with letting your hands be in front of your chest, but turn the backs of the hands to face each other, which is kind of fun. Or you can bring your hands behind you too. That's even actually usually more of a challenge. Good. We're gonna release down, step your way back, and bring your hands to the wall. Come into a couple of little wall push-ups, okay? If you know there is no way I'm going to do push-ups here at the wall because my wrists bother me, you can try fists, right? You can let your elbows bend as you come into push-ups here. Or if you're having none of that, go to your forearms, get out of your hands, and do a little forearm plank here at the wall. So if you're doing the push-ups, elbows are hugging in as you come towards the wall and as you come back away from the wall and see if you can even out the coming in towards the wall and the coming back out. So usually it's, it's really kind of a big rush to come back out from the wall. Everybody's in a hurry to do that. But 
See if you can even out and let your elbows hug kind of down towards the ground. That's what makes it different from traditional push-ups. You're using your shoulders and your arms differently than in a traditional push-up. So take your time. Good. And then finish off. And see if you can from here. Do go on to your forearms. And some of you might even want to shift your hips back. So you can come into like a little dolphin pose here at the wall. Hopefully it feels like a relief to either come into the forearm plank or even shift your hip back just a little bit. So that changes the angle of your shoulders. You can go deeper and deeper if you want, letting yourself come farther back with your hips. Don't force anything. Nice. And then let yourself walk on back to the wall. And let's actually walk on back to our mats and come on down onto our bellies on the floor. So let yourself release on down and make a little pillow with your hands if you're comfortable to do that and rest your forehead on your hands. And then at first, just curl your toes under on the mat back there and let yourself lift your knees up off the, off the mat. And feel the belly engaging a little bit. Let yourself just feel the feet getting a nice stretch, the bottoms of your feet. And then let the knees come back down and now come to the tops of the feet. So you're pressing into the top of the toes. Lift your knees up a little bit if you can when you're doing that. And then release that down and let's bend our knees, bring our feet on up and go ahead and circle your feet. You can circle in both directions anytime you want. You can switch, you can do a little foot dance back there if you'd rather. And if you want your legs to go side to side, lower legs going into windshield wiper blades, you can do that. Good, and then we'll come back to our legs being nice and long again. And now float your head just a tiny bit up off your hands, right? Feel the belly engaging so that you're protecting your low back. And then let your head come back down for a second. Take a breath into your low back and try to really relax your hips. Which means for a lot of us that our heels hike outward, not everybody does that. It just depends on how you're built. But try to really let go through the legs all the way up into your hips and breathe into your low back. So you literally feel the low back rise and expand as you inhale. Good. And now, let yourself come up a little bit with your head off your hands. And let's bend our right knee and flex our right foot. Now, you can decide here. Maybe you want to stay right here. This is a bit of a back bend. Just lifting your head up engages your back body, right? If you want to go higher, you can bring your left forearm up a little bit more underneath you, and some of you might want to reach back with your right hand and get hold of that right foot, either the ankle or the top of the foot. And here we are in a half bow pose, whether you have your foot or not, you're in a half bow. Right? If you need to put your head back down because it's too much, do it. If you can think of pressing your foot a little bit into your hand, and, and that really opens across the right side of the chest, it's a big shoulder stretch too, so be mindful. And then we're going to release head back down, let the leg come back down, and once your head is all the way down again, bend that left knee, flex the foot. And see if you can float your head up just a little bit. So again, I mean, that might be enough right there. That is engaging your back body, lifting you up. It's a back bend. You can use your right forearm to give you a little support if you like to reach back and get hold of that foot. But once you have the foot, if it's too much, put your head back down. If you press the foot into your hand, like you're trying to stretch your leg back long again, you can really feel the quad, right? You can bring your arm under you more and go up higher if you choose to. That is up to you. Half bow. To me, these are harder than doing both legs at the same time. But it's a great 
quad stretch there. Come on back down. Now from here, bring your feet towards the outside corners of your mat down there. And so the, the feet can even be almost on the floor or on the floor if you want. And let your heels go inward. So your heels are releasing down towards the ground. And you're just going to breathe into your low back. And try to do that same thing of releasing through the legs all the way up into your hips. Good. And then from here, bring the feet a little more underneath you. They can still be a little bit apart. Bring your arms down alongside you and float your head and your legs up a little bit. Let yourself come into a locust pose here. You can release your hands off the floor too. And reach back with your fingertips and toes back towards the wall behind you. And then come down for a breath. Let the head rest on the ground if you can. Or if you feel better to turn your head to one side, by all means do. Take a couple of breaths. Now the next time we come up, you can either go back to that locust where you were. Or some of you may want to bend your knees, both of them, and try to get your feet back there. And press your feet into your hands, lift your head up. There's a bow pose. And if you lift your, your feet up a little higher, you get even more into a back knee. So it's up to you whether you come into that locust with everything long reaching back, or if you like to do bow pose, by all means do. And we are going to release all the way down, and now shift yourself back towards child's pose, but be mindful about it. So, you know, if you need to stop with your bottom kind of up in the air and yourself onto your forearms at first, do it. So that when you start to shift your hips back, your big toes are together, your knees can separate as much as feels good. You know, sometimes it feels good to have your knees closer together. And, and some people like to rest their, their rib cage, their front ribs, on, on their, their thighs there. But some people would rather separate their knees. So you, you just got to be okay in your own hips and knees. You can keep your arms soft overhead or you can bring your arms back alongside your legs with the palms up. And just enjoy nice full breath. Nice. And then we'll bring our hands back by our knees. As we come up, we're going to bring our legs on around in front of us to sit. So be mindful. Take your time as you bring your legs on around and stretch them out for a second. Let your ankles move through your feet and your ankles. Let your feet do a little wiper blade. And if you need to sit up on a blanket, do. And let's just try. Bringing, let's all bring our right knee up. And let, your, let yourself, if possible, start to lean back just a little bit. And look at your left long leg there. Make sure your knee and toe is facing up. You can uh, hold behind your thigh here. If you, if you want, you can even try to wrap your forearm, your right forearm, around the back of your thigh. This might be enough right here. You can lift the foot up higher. If you want, you can even reach down and get your foot with your hands at the ball of your foot for a heron pose. And you can stay right here without straightening your knee out. Right? If you want, you can let the leg come up longer. And imagine that you're looking up over the top of your toes. Yeah? And not everybody's leg will do this, right? So staying here is fine. Let yourself just be mindful. You can open the hip by keeping the knee bent. You can stay right here, but you're trying to keep your back nice and long. Good. One more breath. And then bring your foot on back down to the floor. Go ahead and bow your head forward for a second. You might even round a little bit in your upper back so that you're releasing for breath. And then we're going to come up and we're going to switch legs. So bringing that left foot in. And again, you know, you know your body better than anybody. When you start to lean back, if 
letting yourself come here, that it feels better to stay right here. Just stay right here. Because you're really using your core right here. You can lift the foot up so you can reach out and get hold of the inside and the outside of the ball of foot. Again, it's not necessary to come into a straighter leg. That's only if it feels really good to you to let your leg come a little straighter. And think of a lift in the front of your body. Take your time. Let yourself just enjoy. One more breath. And then bring the foot back down. And again, kind of bow your head a little bit, round just a little bit to let yourself release. Because then we're going to come up and we're going to put both feet on the floor and hold behind both thighs. And we're going to lean back just a little bit for a little boat pose. So floating the feet on up, flexing through the feet, separating your heels a little bit, feeling the outside edges of your big toe mounds together. And this is a boat pose right here. You don't have to do anything else. You know, if you like to play a little bit with trying to get your feet up higher, just like we just did, you can. And of course, really, if you think about how you held your foot before, if you were able to get your feet, it actually makes the pose easier, right? So be mindful, let your knees stay bent. Think about focusing on the core of the body there. Take your time, good. And then, let's come on down with our feet. Open our knees out to the side. Come on into a little Baddha Konasana. So letting yourself, if it feels okay to come a bit forward, do. Remember, you want to come forward with a long back, with that low back coming forward, not just rounding into this pose. And if you're better off to sit up, sit up. Have your hands behind you if you want to, to support you. Whatever feels like a, a big release, both for your back and your hips, right? Good. One more breath. You got your feet right there and you want to give your feet a little bit of a massage. It feels awfully good to massage into the arch of the foot with your thumbs here. This pose is perfect for doing that. But. And then when you're ready, and you rise on back up, you can always use your hands to help your knees come back up. Stretch your legs out for a second. Move a little bit side to side. And we're going to lie down on the floor on our backs from here. So be easy as you come on down. Let yourself release to your back. Bring your feet to the floor, and for a second, stretch your arms overhead, right? And like you're stretching, like if you just stretched in the morning, do that for a second. Maybe your low back comes off the floor. That's good. Just let yourself do it. And then, like we did earlier in class, take your right hand, wrap, hold on to your left wrist, and then just pull a little bit over to the side here on your back. Just a little bit. Let yourself feel that more open through the left rib cage there. And then come back through center. Let your left hand get your right wrist. And just a little bit over to the side as you pull upward too a little bit. And just breathe. Let the ribs open up. And then release. Let your elbows bend. Bring your arms back down alongside your body. And then put your hands wherever you want and let your knees come from one side to the other. You can widen your feet out if you want. If you like doing that, bringing the feet to the outside edges of your mat, you can. And, and that way you can actually get the knees, you know, a little bit different feeling in those twists if you come wider. So kind of pay attention to what your body needs. If you're in the twist to the right and you want to put your right foot up on the outside of your left leg right above your knee, if you like that little bit of weight to open up that front, the front of that top hip, you can do those. Left, and when you go to the left, your left foot would come up to go on the outside above your right knee on the outside. So those are optional too. gives it just a 
big stretch too through the front of the body and your belly gets a nice stretch after the heron and the boat pose we did. So take your time, you know, maybe your body is telling you, man, oh man, I need to do a happy baby pose or I need to do something else entirely. You know, you might want to do a wide angle here on your back and stretch your legs out. You might want to do cross-country skiing on the ceiling movements or bicycling up there. Be mindful. Just let, the, let yourself just, instead of your mind trying to tell you what to do, kind of just let your body go for it. What, what sounds good right now? Moving in any certain way doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a yoga pose. Do a bridge or a supported bridge. Take your time. And then I'm going to start with the lights. And then gradually I'll work my way around to the ringing stuff. Remember, you don't necessarily always have to do the same thing as you want to. Lie back on a little bolster. I have these little bolsters that are like a tri-folded blanket. And you can lie back with those on your spine if you like. If you'd like to feel a sense of opening your chest, your shoulders, you can have a bolster underneath your knees, of course, any size that you want. So I'll walk around, and then as people get ready, you can give me a sign. something you need, wave at me, but just enjoy feeling the ground underneath you supporting you. Remember it's that firmness of the floor that really can help you to feel how soft your body can get. The, the difference between that firmness and letting go through your muscles. You can just feel it better when you're on the ground, lying on the floor. Such a really good way to let your body align. And just appreciate gravity holding you there. Feeling released from your hands up through your arms and your shoulders. And your feet up through your legs into your hips. And then just be with your own breath. Remember whatever helps you to keep focusing back to your breath, whether it's counting your breaths or thinking of a word that you use when you inhale, a different word when you exhale, or a mantra. Just finding those little quiet places for your brain. And just give yourself the gift of these few minutes and allow yourself to completely and fully relax.
rising and falling with your breath and feeling yourself there on the floor again. And as you start to feel like moving, let the fingers and the toes, if possible, lead you into moving through into your hands, your feet when you're ready, and your arms and legs. And move the way that feels good to you. Stretch or bend and take your time. You know you're welcome to stay on your back welcome anytime to roll to either your right or your left side. So if you're comfortable to come into a soft fetal position on one side, you can always use your arm as a pillow. You don't have a blanket there and just let yourself rest comfortably for a bit. Stay still very relaxed and sitting up, it's almost like your bones take over, the spine takes over to lengthen up and you still are able to stay nice and released in your hips and your shoulders. So get comfortable in how you're sitting when you get there and let your eyes close and bring your hands to a place where you feel nice and open through your chest. And you can come back to your breaths again, watching your breath all the way in and out. And let your next exhale bring your hands gently to meet there in front of your heart. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Thanks for being here in the